Welcome to Robots in Depth. Today I'm honored to have Jana Trumova here. I usually start people uh, start by asking people how they got into robotics, how they discovered the field, right? So where did where did All your right. journey start? So in my case, I would say it was a complete coincidence. Uh, so as a high schooler, I really liked math and uh, natural sciences in general. But uh, people told me, don't go to math, go to computer science, there's more money in it. Mm. So I did. I went to study computer science and I was a lot into theory. And I started doing my PhD back in Czech Republic at Masaryk University. Uh, and during PhD, I met some really cool people who did robotics, Colin Belta, uh, Emilio Frazzoli, Daniela Rus. And they got me hooked on this idea of using formal verification, which was my topic, in context of robot control and planning. And that's, uh, that's basically it. I got passionate about it and uh, just kept continuing with Why I wanted to talk to you was this formal verification. Because sure. it's from a safety perspective, it's just needed. We, we cannot work without it. And also from a business perspective, if we can verify the robots right. is actually so going to do what we ask it to do, mm -hmm. everybody outside robotics is going to be so much more inclined to, to work with us. So could you give us a primer? We're not the expert like you are. Start from the very beginning. All right. So uh, when you want to make sure that your system, any kind of system, either software system or robot or mm. hardware system, works as you expect it to, what mm. you do typically is to run some tests and run some simulations, right? Mm. So uh. tests and simulations can reveal errors but they cannot sort of provide a proof that there are no errors in your system. Mm. So the idea of formal verification is actually to do that, to have some formal proof, some mathematical rigorous mm. proof that your system works as you expect it to. Mm. So for that, you typically need to model your system somehow. You need to say what's your specification, and then you can utilize computer science methods and, and programs, algorithms, to get the answer, yes, this is right, no, this is not right. That's, mm. the, that's the general idea of formal verification. Yeah, and that means that uh, when we have this, and this is important to understand, that when we have that proof, it's an absolute truth, right? It, it's not kind of, we can take that to the regulatory authorities and say that this is the way it is. Sure, uh, it is. It can be understood that way. Uh, I mean, you get a formal proof, meaning that you explore the whole state space, but that's under the assumption that mm. you got the model right mm. Mm. and that you got the specification right. So, mm. formal verification is not the same thing as validation. Mm. For me, validation means that I actually need to specify what I want from the system first, mm. and then I can verify that. Mm. So the, the authorities would have to develop a specification that we could then valid, uh, validate. Yes, yeah. and that specification, like in, in industry or, or uh, talking to people who are not engineers, usually comes as pages and pages of text. Mm. And it's not formalized, but mm. in formal verification you already work with some formalized specifications such as temporologic formulas or mm. Uh, or similar, so mm. uh, there is there is a gap in between that. I don't think that it's that straightforward that we could take our proof mm. and say, look, people, it's gonna work, mm. um, because that's not the implication there is. Mm -hmm. It's gonna work under the assumptions that we got the model and the specification right. Mm. So what we really have to do, if, if we put the formal verification, which I understand we can do, aside, and then we take the, the pages and pages of text and put, we put those aside because that's never going to work. We have to find a common ground and meet in the middle and, allow, and, and form a m way of communicating between regulatory authorities and the robotics community and really meet in the middle. Do you think that, is the, do you have any s feedback on that that we can hear? It's, th that is really, really hard questions. Do you think we yeah. are ready to start that work or do we still have work in, in, in kind of the computer science part and the robotics part to do before we're ready or can we no, start now? I, I think we should start now. I, mm. I know that uh, some people are focusing on, on sort of bridging structured English mm. with, uh, with temporal logics. Uh, oh, interesting, yeah. Or like uh, 
uh, trying to find a graphical user interface to to um, uh, graphical user interface to uh, specify something rigorously that can be translated into temporal logics, which is the specification language in formal verification. Mm -hmm. So there are att attempts that I know of coming from our side. Mm -hmm. I'm honestly, I'm, I'm not on honestly very aware of what's happening from the other side. So for me, I, I actually try to utilize formal verification methodology mm -hmm. to do both. Yes, to so sort of mm -hmm. reach safety and effectiveness. Mm -hmm. In the sense that, that I flip around the formal verification uh, methodology into synthesis methodology. So instead of taking a look at a robot that does something and saying, yes, this is right, no, this is not right, I'm trying to design algorithms that will synthesize a controller for the robot that is correct by design. Ah, interesting. So you, yeah. you, 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 the, the, the formal verification then... So, so, so you don't have to verify it anymore. Because it comes from the because verification. Because it comes from the construction ah. of, of the controller. So that's And also the if you idea. change that, it is updated automatically, right? Yeah. So, so they cannot be, this is, a, as a programmer, we of course know this, if you have two source codes and you need to merge them, that's just a yeah. big, hairy problem. Yeah. But here it is so that if you change the first one, the second will change automatically, right? Because they, they come from each other, right? Or one comes from the other. Uh, essentially, yeah. Yeah, that's so, cool, that's cool. So you have your system, you have the model, and mm. then regardless what kind of mm. specification you have in mind, mm. and that specification can reflect safety or mm. effectiveness or efficiency. You can have mm. some optimality criteria on top mm. of your temporal logic stuff. Mm. Then you can synthesize a controller for the robot. And then you change your specification, and the same algorithm synthesizes a different controller. Ah, and if from that, as it's kind of like you compile source code into an executable. Yeah. And then if yeah, you change exactly. the source code, the, you, you, get you a don't have to rewrite outcome. the. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it could be. It could be seen that Very, yeah. very interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, so. What can you say about the interest from industry in this? I mean, formal verification. I would say it's a well-established topic in computer science. Mm. I know that there are companies who use that as a, let's say, parallel to testing and simulation, or instead, especially this uh, this theorem proving. Mm -hmm. So they, they use that, they use it as a guidance to re, uh, reveal errors. That's mostly software companies. I'm not sure about robotics. Mm. So in robotics, uh, it's it's tricky. It, this topic is not out there for a very long time. I would say this is this is like a thing since two thousand nine, maybe. Mm. And there are still a big limitations to to the whole idea. So I think that this is not ready to be put in industry per se right now. Mm, mm. I know that some startups might be using some formal uh, synthesis, but uh, mm. nothing, uh, nothing, it's not huge. It's no, definitely no. not huge. Uh, and, and I say it's a little bit doubtful whether you're actually ready for that uh, industry because they have another time yeah. scale and yeah, they exactly. want it done in a year yeah. or six months or something like that. And that's not the time that's frame you're about to deliver in, I guess. Yes. Yeah, yes. okay, okay. So how is you said it's a new field? Uh, it's relatively new field. So yeah. 2009, you said, is some kind of a starting point for the field. Yeah, I would say I would say that the starting point are uh, papers by Hadas Kres Gazet, uh, George Feinekos, George Papas, mm. uh, that sort of started exploring uh, temporal logic based synthesis for robotic systems, and then then there was this huge. Um, like popularity of of this type of works mm. uh, coming after that. I mean, there are earlier works than mm. this, mm. but uh, I would say that it all started That's around when it, this critical when, mass. when it when it got like uh, mm. more than one or two uh, papers and uh, started like evolving uh, quite fast. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, how much progress have been made since that time? And, uh, have we? Uh, where are we? Are we in the infancy of the area, and we'll have to wait 10, 20 years before we can start applying it in in more of a, of a controlled way, or are we in the middle? Or 
I think that uh, we are somewhere in the middle. There are attempts to bring it a little bit more to the practice because a lot of a uh, lot of our results stay in, let's say, we develop this algorithm and we run a bunch of simulations. It works nicely, so we are happy with it. We publish it and we move on. Mm -hmm. But uh, the application to say real robotic systems is, I would say, very limited at this point. Um, and uh, through this robotics challenge, they are trying to to expand it and uh, to to bridge that gap. To, to bridge that gap to encourage people to actually touch the real systems. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, some of us uh, we have experiments with real robots in in our papers, but uh, those are like I would say they are still toy examples. Mm. There are still toy examples. So we have to start to, but the, uh, the area is ready for that, to bring now the, what you developed theoretically and in simulation. I know simulation is it's, it's, it's yeah. uh, cursed with success. It's always going to work in success. It's it, always going to work, yeah. Yeah, it's always going to work so in simulation. But you are ready to, to start interacting with real hardware? Uh, I would say we are, um, except that, as I mentioned, one mm -hmm. of the big things with uh, with uh, this form of verification framework mm. is the scalability, is the mm. computational complexity. So, so far, I would say that a lot of these um, algorithms and methods that we develop mm. hit that uh, boundary of mm. being computable in real time, and we have to do something about that. Mm. So you get the... Uh, uh, and we're talking magnitudes away from being ready for that. Yeah, we are talking like it takes hours to mm. compute a plan for three robots in 10 times 10 mm. partitioned environment mm. 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 right now. And, and, and that is using some uh, pretty advanced hardware already, I would presume. No, that's that's on MacBook because mm. that's <laughs> that comes with like uh, your mm, simulations, okay. right? Then so you this is... You couldn't do it in real time, I would presume, but you could probably reasonably yeah, easily get can, it to run in a couple uh, of minutes. Sure. Is it pa is it a paralyzable problem? Can you use the GPU? Can you use the server? Good question. Yeah, I think that this, this is paralyzable problem. And uh, but again, uh, the the problem of the problem is that it uh, it is exponential. Mm, never there is a good this, thing. Yeah, never a good thing. So once you hear exponential, mm. that's, that's bad. So I mean, that's going to help you with the, that three robots in 10 times 10, mm. but it's not going to help you with 15 robots in 100 times 100. Mm, mm. So it's you, just will always, be a you will always find a realistic instance that is just way too big to be handled, mm. even if you do these things. So, mm. so I think that we need to focus on different kind of uh, techniques and decompositions and uh, decentralization and uh, the, these these kind of things to algorithmically attack uh, the because the that could problem. Yeah. yeah, but I there's no hope in ever getting around the exponential problem part of this. I guess uh, that's we can try to handle it. But it's in the nature of the thing. I it's guess. in the nature of the thing, definitely. Do you see that, for instance, the, the self-driving cars is really pushed by some large companies. Mm -hmm. Do you see any interest in verifying those systems formally? I, I guess regulatory entities would be very interested in that. I think that that, uh, that would be really exciting. And I think that this is one of the application areas that formal verification can really make impact on. Mm. Right so now, are, we, are you kind of ready for that? I'm not. I, I'm not sure. So, so I. I mean, I. I happened to work on a project mm. uh, that was led by Emilio Fretzoli and mm. Daniel Arus on an autonomous car. Mm. Uh, it was an autonomous golf cart in Singapore mm. a few mm. years ago, mm. and what we did is that we actually deployed some of the formal synthesis methods mm. in the car. So um, the idea there was really, really beautiful because uh, um, Emilio said, uh, imagine that you are going on the road and you have a set of road rules that you mm. should obey. But then what happens if you are just unable to obey them? So you as a driver, you know that you are supposed to stuck in the right lane. Mm. But then when you see an obstacle, you violate that rule for a little bit of time. 
So we use those formal uh, verification methods to create a least violating synthesis mm -hmm. uh, procedure. And we automatically synthesized a plan, a, a trajectory of the vehicle that was least violating in terms of those uh, rules that you are given and priorities of them. Mm. So in the end, they actually did deploy this on the on the cart in Singapore, and it was beautiful because when the car went, it it went by the obstacle very tightly, mm. uh, which really corresponded to the behavior of minimizing, the violation. minimizing the violation. Mm. So, for instance, this uh, kind of this kind of synthesis, trajectory synthesis, motion planning. Uh, in connection with formal methods, I think that that could be uh, something interesting because it gives you essentially guarantees on how the system behaves. Mm, very interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. And is uh, if we if we're talking about the autonomous car, is that a challenging problem from a verification? Absolutely. Point of view, or is it a, a tractable, suitable problem? Absolutely. There are just so many different kind of levels that you can take a look at it. You can take a look at the hardware, you can take a look at the planning, uh, you can t take a look at control, you can take a look at way too many levels and it's a super complex system. So you can take a look at parts of the car and you can try to verify those. Mm. How does this relate to testing? Let me ask you one question. Would you sit in a car that was formally verified but not tested? Probably not. Exactly. I wouldn't either. I think that, that testing is something that is completely necessary. Hmm. You have to do that. Because as I said, in, in formal verification, you always have the trouble that you are working with models, you are working with specifications that you figure out, meaning that there is a lot of space for human error in there. So you just need to test it anyways. You just and need to test the real physical systems because the only guarantees that you have are with respect to models, to subset of the system, to some abstraction of the system. Mm -hmm. So testing can then be brought back in as a way to refine the model and then uh, improve the formal verification. Because if we test it and the <laughs> they don't match, the real world kind of trumps it. Yeah. And we can yeah. bring that data back in. Do you, do you see any uh, work in combining formal methods with testing? I see works that are on falsification. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's kind of opposite. You, you are not mm -hmm. trying to prove that you're trying to prove that it's not working. That it's not working, and when you prove that it's not working, you have uh, the, you get like a counterexample. You get uh, get behavior that breaks everything down, and then you can focus on this behavior, and that's mm -hmm. done through some systematic search mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So I think that you can you can also use formal verification to uh, not to get proofs, but to somehow uh, somehow reveal errors, but in, in a guided fashion. Yeah, fascinating yeah. stuff this. And of course, this is really going to be essential and it's really going to help us solve some major issues that robotics is facing today. So this was yeah, very was nice to hear about. And although we couldn't recommend a particular book, the, <laughs> we'll have some links below this video and where we'll try to introduce everybody to the area. and. Uh, uh, and so that everybody could kind of get the grips of this, because I think that in the long run, everybody has to have this in the back of their minds when they're doing robotics, that they want great. deployed in society. That would be great. Indeed. Thank you very much for taking Thank the time you. to do an interview. It's been a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you very much. This episode is sponsored by Aptomica. Everything you need in modular robotics. Or robots up close, what's going on in robotics, online and on the road. If you like this interview, don't forget to subscribe, follow us on Twitter, and subscribe to our email newsletter on robotsindepth.com. You can also support the show on Patreon.